How's it going everybody? It's RuTech. Today we're talking about an incredible $600 gaming PC you can build in 2024. Let's first take a look at all the parts we're going to use in this PC, starting with the Ryzen 5600. This processor is a tried and true CPU that uses AMD's Zen 3 architecture, and it packs a serious punch with its 6 cores, 12 threads, and max clock of 4.4 GHz. For this particular build, we will be using the stock cooler. The stock cooler will manage, but an aftermarket cooler would certainly not be a bad idea. Another great thing about using AMD's stock cooler is that it comes with pre-applied thermal paste, as you can see right here, so be careful not to touch the paste. Next up, let's check out the motherboard, which is MSI's Pro B550VC with Wi-Fi. Built-in Wi-Fi is, of course, super, super convenient because that means you don't have to buy an external USB adapter or a PCIe Wi-Fi card. And also, throughout my many PC build endeavors, I've always been a huge fan of MSI motherboards as they hold up really well and have phenomenal build quality. And this board is no exception. It has great heat sinks, tons of upgradability, and just overall, a lot of features for a great price. Also in the box, we'll find the Wi-Fi antennas as well as the IO shield. The other stuff in the box we won't be using unless you'll be installing an external SSD or hard drive. Be sure to place the motherboard directly on top of the box for later when we build the PC. Now for the RAM, I chose Timitex Pinnacle Conduit 16GB Kit. You're getting two sticks of DDR4 8GB of RAM that run at 3200MHz with a cast latency of CL16. For builds like these, I believe CL16 3200MHz is the absolute minimum you should get for gaming. Next for storage, I chose Silicon Power's NVMe A60 SSD. This one in particular has one terabyte of storage, which is absolutely more than enough for a modern game library. It's also, as I've said, an NVMe SSD, so you're going to be getting great speeds for not just gaming, but also file transfers and the overall Windows PC experience. Next up, let's check out the case, which I am really excited to talk about. This is the Okinus Aqua 3, which comes with three built-in 120mm RGB fans. This is awesome because we won't be needing to buy any extra fans. Next, the power supply. For all of my builds, I typically go with EVGA. As simply put, they make very reliable power supplies, and they are truthfully the one brand I've never had an issue with. This supply in particular is the EVGA W1500, which supplies an 80 plus certified 500 watts of power. And in the box, of course, you'll find the power cable, the supply itself, and then four screws that's hidden underneath one of those flaps that will secure it to the PC. I didn't show it on camera, but trust me, they are there. Another great thing about this supply is, of course, no ketchup and mustard cables, meaning the connecting cables are black, so it'll fit with the aesthetic of the computer. And last but certainly not least, let's talk about the graphics card. I picked out the AMD RX 6600 from ASRock. This is a PCIe 4 graphics card that comes with 8GB of VRAM. As you'll see in the benchmark section, this is the perfect graphics card for both 1080p and 1440p gaming within reason. And if you haven't noticed already, it's also a very beautiful graphics card as it comes in an all-white finish, which will fit perfectly with the aesthetic of this particular PC build. Now let's get started with putting this thing together. First, get your Ryzen 5600 processor and locate the golden triangle on the bottom left. This will be lining up with this circle right here on the CPU socket. With light force, lift this lever right here so that it's upright, and then gently place the 5600 into the socket. You can give it a very gentle wiggle to ensure it's installed properly, and then lower the lever back into its original position. Now you'll want to remove these four screws surrounding the CPU, as well as the brackets that they were holding. Now we can install the CPU cooler. I typically like to have the AMD logo aligned with the IO, so facing in the direction of where all the ports are for the motherboard. With that in place, we can fasten all the screws. Now you wanna make sure that you fasten each screw just a little bit at a time. I like to do four turns top left, four turns bottom right, four turns bottom left, and four turns upper right until all of them are fastened, and then take the cable coming out of the cooler and plug it into the header labeled CPU fan. This is at the top of the motherboard. Now we can get started on installing the RAM. Push down the retention brackets of the second and the fourth RAM slots. And when installing this particular set of RAM, you'll want to have the sticker side facing the cooler. Gently place the memory into the slot and use your two thumbs to get a click on each side. Ensure that you're only doing downwards force, otherwise you risk bending the socket off of the board. Now let's prep for the installation of the SSD by first removing this heatsink right here, and then removing the sticker off of the bottom, which is where you'll find the contact thermal pad. Looks like I got a snap. Let's see who it is. Thanks, Benny. Anyway, let's grab our A60 SSD from Silicon Power and in this exact orientation, install it into the slot. The SSD will be held in place by the heatsink, so place the heatsink back into its original position and then reinstall its screws. 
And with that finished, we have installed the CPU, the RAM, the CPU cooler, and the SSD, and the whole motherboard assembly is ready to be installed into the case. So go get your Aqua 3 case and remove all of the panels. Some will be held in by screws on the back and others will just pop right out like the front glass panel. I distinctly remember that hurting my ears. Anyway, on the bottom side of the case, you'll find this box, which will have all the essential screws that we'll need for installing all the parts into the case. You will also find some complimentary and handy zip ties, as well as the instructions manual. Now, before we install the motherboard, we have to get the IO shield in place. The IO shield is very simple and easy to install. All you really need to do is align it with its cutout and then apply pressure along the corners until it clicks into place. And now it's time for the motherboard to be put into the case. The best way to do this is to align the IO ports with the IO shield. But a secondary way to do this is to check if the motherboard screw holes are aligned with the case standoffs. Now, if you remember that box that came with the case, it had this bag of screws in it, and we'll be using these particular screws to fasten the motherboard. Now that the motherboard is fastened in place, let's look at the bottom side of the case to install our power supply. Make sure the supply is installed with the fan facing downward for proper airflow, and then you can place the power supply into its little cubby. And to fasten it into place, we'll use those four screws that came with the power supply. Like I said, I forgot to show this bag coming out of the box on camera, but yes, these four screws do come with the power supply. So now that we have everything except for the graphics card installed, you're gonna have this huge mess of cables, but I promise you it's not as tough as it looks. Let's start with this cable right here coming out of the fan hub. It will get plugged directly into this cable, which you can find coming out of the power supply. You'll find three chained together and it does not matter which one you plug it into. Next, find this white cable right here, which will pretty much just be loosely dangling out of this cable mess right up top and route it through this top left cutout. And it'll get plugged into the motherboard on the header labeled System Fan 1. Next, coming out of that same cable bunch will be this white cable that looks like this. You'll want to route it through the top middle cutout. It will then be plugged into the header labeled J Rainbow 1. After that, locate this funky looking cable coming out of the bottom of the case. This is the USB-C cable. Route it through this lower middle cutout and plug it into this connector right here labeled a JUSB-1. After that comes the USB 3.0 connector. This will get routed through the bottom middle cutout. It'll then get plugged into this connector labeled USB 3.0. Next is the HD audio cable, which looks like this. We're gonna route that through this bottom right cutout and it'll get plugged into the connector on the bottom left of the motherboard. Next comes the front panel connectors. They'll be grouped together like this. Route these through this bottom right cutout and using the diagram on the screen, plug them into their designated spots. And here's a close up. Now we're going to move on to the cables coming out of the power supply. Starting with this huge cable right here, the 24 pin power connector. Route it through this top middle cutout and plug it into this connector on the upper right side of the motherboard. Side note, the notch on the connector should be facing the right side of the motherboard. After that comes the CPU power cable, which we're going to route through the top right cutout. Now, if you have smaller hands, you probably would be able to plug this in even with the fan in the way, but I could not. So I went ahead and removed this top left fan to give myself the space to be able to plug in these CPU power cables. And when that's done, of course, I reinstall the top fan. Now we're going to prep the case for the installation of the graphics card. Loosen this screw right here and then remove the top two PCIe brackets. You do this by simply wiggling them loose and removing them. After that, make sure the PCIe retention bracket is clicked down. And now finally, we can install that graphics card. It goes in in this exact orientation with the fans facing down. You'll know it's installed all the way when the PCIe retention bracket clicks down. Now using these screws, which came in the box that came with the case, we are going to fasten the graphics card into place. Bars. 
You also want to make sure the graphics card isn't sagging when you're securing it into place. So with your other hand, just give it a little bit of support. The other screw didn't want to go in for some reason, but it's no big deal. The graphics card isn't super heavy, but anyway, re-secure this screw and then get the PCIe power connector, which comes out of the power supply, route it through this bottom middle cutout and then plug it into the graphics card. You'll notice the cable has two different connectors. It does not matter which one you use. After that, just a little bit of cable managing and reinstalling all of the side panels. And just like that, the PC is finished. Now let's move on to installing windows and drivers. So first you'll want to get a USB drive that is at least eight gigabytes in size and plug it into a secondary computer. Then search up Windows 10 or 11 ISO and click the first Microsoft link. I'll also have the link to this site in my description. Then run the file, click yes, let it do a little bit of loading and make sure you have create installation media selected. Then click next. Ensure all the settings are to your preference and the architecture is 64 bit. Then click next, select USB flash drive, click next and select the drive that you plugged into your computer. Then click next and it'll do a little bit of loading. This will take about five minutes. When that's finished, you can remove the USB drive and plug it into the newly built PC. Go ahead and boot it up and it should take you to this screen. Make sure all the language settings are correct, then click next and then install now. We're going to put in the product key later, so click I don't have a product key, and then select Windows 10 Home or Pro, doesn't really matter which. Click I accept the license terms, click next, then custom install Windows only. There should be only one drive that shows up, make sure that's selected, and then click next, and then it'll start installing Windows. After that, there's one more thing we wanna do, which is restart the computer and turn on XMP. When you're taken to this screen right here, you'll want to spam the delete key until it takes you to the BIOS. From here, simply click XMP Profile 1, then click the X on the top right and click Yes. It'll then reboot you back to Windows. We'll also want to ensure we're using an activated version of Windows, so head over to digitalchillmark.com, the best place to get Windows 10 and 11 license keys. Grab Windows 10 Home or Pro, depending on what you installed earlier, and use coupon code RUTECH at checkout to get a 20% discount. And yes, you can trust this site. I've been partnered with them for three years now, and if you run into any issues, feel absolutely free to send me an email. You can find my address in the description. Last but certainly not least, we have the benchmarks. For this portion of the video, we'll just have no commentary and some nice soothing music in the background. See you guys in the outro.
And that will conclude today's build video. If you guys like the new format of the video, let me know. I didn't include that cool uh, cinematic intro that I usually do. I'm just trying to get a little bit more efficient at making these types of videos. My main goal is to get one out a week, but that's pretty much impossible when you have college going on and friends and family and girlfriend, all that good stuff. But yeah, I really hope that this video was helpful to those of you that need guided tutorials on how to build computers. I can understand it can be pretty complicated sometimes, especially with higher end PCs. So if you enjoyed the content you saw today, I would really appreciate a like and a comment and maybe a subscription. Peace out guys.